if you follow these six principles, you will become a great graphic designer. Hi y'all, bonjour, hola, my name is Trish. If you're new, welcome. So guys, today I am super excited because we are going to talk about the six graphic design principles that can help you to become a great graphic designer. It doesn't matter if you are a beginner. So without much ado, let's jump into this so that we can get started. So I'm sure that most of you have heard this famous quote, good artists borrow, which is the same as copy, <laughs> and great artists steal, which is getting inspiration. Everybody has advanced based on learning from other people. Okay, there is nothing new under the sun, as the Bible says. To advance as a graphic designer, you need to find somebody who has done well in the graphic design industry, pick up some of their designs and try and replicate exactly what they have done. And don't be shy about it because as you practice, it will help you to then begin to develop your skill and gradually you will build up on your own niche. When you learn or when you mimic their design, you cannot put those in your portfolio because that's technically not your design. But as you advance and you become a great artist, you then steal ideas. Now, the steal ideas, in my opinion, is basically the same as copying. You know, people try to act as though they are they have something unique, but actually you don't. When you get inspiration from somebody, you're still copying their idea to use it in your design, one or two elements, and you introduce that in your design. So that makes it a unique design that you have created and that one you can put in your portfolio. So with that said, the first graphic design principle that you need to know is typograph the same as font or the text that you have on your design. Okay, so when you're choosing your font, you have to be very strategic. You know, I normally place two types of font in my design and basically I go with bold as my main style of font and then I introduce a style which is uh, um, ah, um, a, hand a, hand a handwritten, you know, font or a cursive font. I don't know why I couldn't even remember. <laughs> now, I'm sure you're wondering what type of fonts to use. Now, I've used a lot of fonts repetitively in my flyers that y'all already know. You know that I like using the Beavers, I like using the Poppin, I like using the Gothic Centric. That's another font that I like to use. I like using the Geometric 415 and then when it comes to the cursive font i like to use the scriptina and then the amalfico so these are the fonts that i like to use in my design because i feel that they are easy to read and it also makes my design very nice so that is why i use those so it might not be the same for you but just find fonts that work for you and just use those in your design. Now I'm sure you're wondering like, okay, Trish, if I don't have these fonts, how do I get them? Now you can go to font.adobe.com. There you can get free font. That is only if you have an Adobe account. Now there you can download like thousands of fonts, which they occasionally, you know, uh, revise and add some more. And once you download it, it's like a cloud link and it shows up in your Photoshop. And that is how you get those. Now, if you don't have access to that, don't worry. There's still thefonts.com where you can go to get free font. And they have thousands of fonts that you can also tap into. And all you have to do is download it, open it in your document, and then basically install it. And it will show up also in your Photoshop. Sometimes you find fonts online that you really wish you knew the font name so you can use it in your design. Now, I have good news for you. Photoshop has what we call match font, and I've already done a tutorial. I will put a link to that in the description below so you can go and watch that video. The next graphic design principle that I want to share with you is color. You have to be strategic in the type of colors that you use. It's best to stick with two to three color that you work with. When you have too many colors, your design gets too busy and even confuses your reader. So you want to keep it to a minimal of two to three 
color schemes. And also you wanna stick with the 60, 30, 10 rule. 60 meaning that if you're choosing three colors, the dominant color should be 60% on your design and then the second color should be 30% and then the least color should be a 10%. So the other thing you have to bear in mind is when you are picking the background color, make sure that the background color doesn't compete with the fonts colors because if that happens it makes it very hard for anybody to read i'm going to link in the description below a tutorial i did on color theory that will help you and guide you in choosing the right colors now i know that this has been a popular question that a lot of people have asked me they keep saying that how are you able to know the colors that work together so well and my answer to that is because of the constant practice and also looking at what other people have done, that has helped me. But besides that, there's also the color wheel, which makes it even much more easier for beginners who are trying to create graphics. So the color wheel, you just go to this website and you notice that on the right hand side, it gives you a wheel and it gives you two colors. It gives you uh, two colors that work very well. And so you can change it to whatever color you want. But besides that, if you look at the very bottom, it also gives you another option. If you click on that option, it takes you to different graphics that have been done in those two color combinations. And you see that this really helps you to see how combining those two colors that you are thinking of using would work and even suggest to you different shades of the same color that you can use that can enhance your graphics. So I hope that this is also very helpful. So the next principle that we are going to talk about is space to give your design a balance. So when designing, you want to emphasize the most important element in your design, such as the title and also the different subjects that you bring in. Maybe it's just one person or two people. So the placement of all of these has to be strategic and make sure that you have white space around your design. The next principle that we're going to talk about is layout. Make a layout that is easy for your reader to follow. And you wanna go ahead and also highlight the important elements to ensure reader knows where to focus after just a glance. And you wanna place significant in information in the beginning or in the middle. So if you've noticed on most of my flyers, I have my theme either in the middle or at the top so that you sort of guide the eye of your reader to the most important information that you are trying to convey to them. You also wanna create a strong focal point. So the next principle we're gonna talk about is visual. You know, we are very connected to things, especially on social media now, things that are catchy stop people. And you want your graphic design or you want your design to be a showstopper that anybody who is just scrolling through social media or scro scrolling through Instagram or Facebook, they will stop when they see your flyer. So, these are some tips that you have to bear in mind. First of all, the graphics, all the graphics should be clear. And the images that you use in your graphics should relate to the message. And I can't stress this enough. Your images should be high resolution images. And I will give you a tip on where to get good images to use as we go through this video. So every image should have a purpose. Before you put it on your design, you need to ask yourself, is this really going to enhance my design? And if it's not, don't use it. Um, and this is a good example of, you know, a good flyer. You can see the title, you can see the subject right in the middle. So it's like the key things are bold and clear. And lastly, you wanna use the rule of thirds to help you place your images and elements in your design. A common way that most people read um, information on paper is that they start from the top and they read down or they start from the left and then they go to the right. So when you are trying to place elements in your graphics, it's good to use the rule of thirds 
which helps you to know how to strategically place elements that will help your reader capture the information you're trying to relay. Now, another question that a lot of people ask me is where I get good images to use. Now, my main source that I go to is on splash.com. They have high resolution images and they are all for free. You don't have to pay anything. So if you want a background image to use, like a concrete, all you have to do is go on Google, type in concrete background, and Google will give you different options that you can choose from. If you have a specific color, you can add that color and Google will suggest some options for you to use. It's the same thing when you're looking for PNG files, something like a light ray, something that you want to use like some of the social media logos. So you can put in Facebook PNG and you will get different options that will be suggested to you. You can download it and use it in your design. The last principle that I want to talk to you about is simplicity. I can't stress that enough. Simplicity is the key to getting a good design done. When you have a page which is all cluttered, nobody wants to look at that because they can't understand what you're trying to convey. So I will urge you to keep your designs to a minimal. Okay, so this is a good example of a flyer that I did, which I kept to a minimal, but the information conveys exactly what I want my audience to get from looking at the flyer. So you can use this as a guide while you design your flyer. So I'm sure with all of this information, you're saying, Trish, what do I do moving forward with all of this information? I will say practice, practice, practice. I can't stress that enough. Look, I started learning how to create flyers about four years ago, and every week I create a flyer. As you create a flyer each week, you basically build on your skill and you advance. So if you are somebody who designs a flyer once a month, guys, this is not going to help you to advance. You need to be somebody, you need to practice creating flyers once a week. Even if you don't have a client that needs it, you can still create these flyers and build on it. You know, and I'm going to do another tutorial and show you what you can do with the flyers that you create. You can actually sell your templates on Etsy and make some ching ching with that. Okay, so we'll talk about that in another video. But back to the question you just need to practice practice once a week and that will help you to advance so guys this brings us to the end of the six principles of graphic design i hope that these principles were very helpful to you leave in the comments below which of these graphic design principles is your favorite and also let me know what steps you are going to take moving forward to advance and become a great graphic designer. I'm so excited. I can't wait to hear the feedback and let me know in the comments below if you want me to go ahead and share with you eight streams of income that can help you as a graphic designer. Bye y'all.